Hello and welcome back to our GCP Mindset channel. My name is Carol Lazovich. We hope you're ready for another year of content on clinical research. If you like our videos, don't forget to subscribe and share. We'll start a new series, especially if you're looking to get kickstarted in the field or with a clinical study on a device, medical drug and IVD. This is our how-to series and we hope it's helpful. Let's start from the beginning, how to start a clinical study. Stay tuned. Starting a clinical study should not bring this daunting feeling of where do I begin. It should rather be exciting since a new innovation could improve or even save a lot of lives in one way or another. You may want to start a REACH study due to various reasons, but in general, clinical studies are designed to add to medical knowledge related to the treatment, diagnosis, and prevention of diseases or conditions. Before starting a study, ensure to be familiar with the many steps and create yourself a checklist so that you're prepared and not to lose time. For a study to begin, you'll need to develop a clinical investigation plan or study protocol. This document usually details the number of participants you require to show a representative result, the selection criteria of the study subjects, the study duration, ways you'll limit research bias, study procedures, assessments that will be done, what data will be collected, how the data will be reviewed and analysed. Even though there are helpful guidelines like ICHE6, which describes the requirements of clinical study protocols, the process of writing a study protocol can be difficult based on your level of experience. Therefore, sponsors should decide whether they can do it themselves or with the help of an expert, typically a reliable CRO or a consultant. Our team of medical writers can support you with this. Contact them using any of the links below. To develop a study plan, Researchers will review prior information about the product from preclinical studies in order to start the first in human trials. By reviewing previous study data, you can identify your research question or objectives, such as treatment A is better than treatment B. This will require you to define a primary and secondary endpoint based on reasonable estimate of what effects you expect to measure. Knowing what the study is supposed to prove is the starting point of your study, which is also important in determining how many patients you require for your clinical study. An experienced biostatistician can also easily support you with this step as you want to avoid having too little or too many study subjects. Having too many patients more than required based on the objective can lead to adjusting the study design or even objectives of the study. Hence, designing the study however challenging is extremely critical to the success of your clinical study or investigation. And if done right, your products can reach the market and help patients. A good study design will allow you to be able to derive valid and meaningful scientific conclusions using appropriate statistical methods and also create robust and reliable evidence for safety and performance or efficacy. These are important as they have an impact on whether the drug or device is allowed to enter the market or the clinical development can continue, hence convincing evidence is required. Why is this important? Should the study design not support drawing meaningful conclusions, the study might have to be repeated. Now you've successfully created your study plan, ensure you have defined your selection of participants thoroughly. This will be the inclusion and exclusion criteria. The inclusion exclusion criteria will ensure the right participants take part in your study. Failure to follow these can lead to your study later on being excluded or rendered invalid. Next time we'll help you decide on how to collect clinical study data. We hope this guide was helpful. If still unsure, please contact a CRO or a consultant to guide you. See you next time. Goodbye.